Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is Lawn Care Live. I've got a special guest today and we're talking about how to get lawn care customers. So I've got a, a handful of questions, uh, hopefully gonna help you guys out and learn how to grow your business and get more customers. Let's get started. All right, so I'm here with uh, Jeremiah James from Growing Green Landscapes and we are at the, the 2022 Hype House at the time of this video, uh, which is uh, brought to us by the Hardscape Academy and Entrepreneur Academy, so you can check those resources out later on. But we're talking about how to get more customers, and I thought it would be helpful just to go over some, some different types of marketing and also some different types of, uh, of customers that we're trying to get. So Jeremiah, when um, your experience going after commercial accounts, do you have commercial accounts, and how did you get them, and, and what would you say to trying to get more commercial accounts? Commercial accounts is a funny one. Um, that's what everybody I feel like wants. Everybody wants commercial work. It, they say it pays better. Uh, it's year-round income. There's a lot of benefits to it. There are some downfalls. It's very competitive. It is a cutthroat market in commercial. But um, as far as gaining the customers, so the ones that I've gotten have been through just networking, man, knowing people in the community, um, and also reaching out to property management companies. If you're if you're searching for commercial lots or commercial properties, 99% of the time they're going to be managed by a property management company. Um, that's just the the company's not going to fool with it, hiring lawn care companies and doing all that. That's just not what their priorities are. So they're going to hire a property management company for groundskeeping and all of that. So um, just literally Google property management companies in my area and, and reach out to them and say, hey, if y'all ever have anything come up that, that needs to be bid. Let me know, give me your contact information, maybe go to the office and meet them in person. The, uh, the property management company that I work with, they, we, we're on a first name basis. They can call me anytime they need to. We talk, I mean, I don't know, a couple times a month. No, nah, not a couple times a month, maybe, I don't know, 12, 10, 12 times a year maybe. We stay in contact uh, a pretty good bit. So they know that if they ever have anything come up, they can call me and reach out. But that, that first initial relationship is built with just, I mean, just, networking to the tens i mean just, just network 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 get to get your name out in the community and those maybe it's an hoa if you're working in there doing residential yards the homeowner association president might see you driving around um so just be in there be super nice always go the extra mile take so much trash can back in there i mean stuff it goes you we go on a long list down the road of where that could how to get those customers but um, the biggest thing I would say is network with people in your community and uh, also just reach out to property management companies. Don't be scared. Yeah, sometimes I've thought uh, if you've got a bunch of residential customers, you end up getting one who happens to be a business owner. You yep. know, you don't, sometimes you don't know how important and wealthy the person's yard that, that you're taking care of and you find, oh, that guy owns a you know, huge business. So um, as far as you know, going after residential customers, can you talk through like traditional marketing methods? That, like, do you do any postcards, door hangers, direct mail, any yeah. of that stuff? Or uh, and then we'll after that we'll go into more online marketing. So traditional marketing, uh, I personally haven't used it that much in my business. We do a lot of word of mouth referral work is what we've gotten our, over the years, which helped us build up. But um, we're here in Tampa Bay. Launchpreneur Academy is sponsoring this. I mean. They have a great resource to, to work with Postcard Mania. Go download uh, their their postcards. You can design them to your own templates and put your own information in there. And then Postmark Card Mania can print them for you. Like it's the amount. I think it's like seventy five bucks or something for a design. It's insane. And then you can you can go to EDDM route, mail all those out. And I think that's probably one of the most effective ways, honestly, if you're going to stick to traditional like paper marketing, is that's going in a mailbox and. Um, you can decide where that, what mailbox that goes into. You can decide what area of town they go into. So, as opposed to going and passing out, I know some neighborhoods say no soliciting, no solicitation, and we have a lot of those in our area. In our area, and um, we actually discussed that on a live stream last night. It was to talking about what do you do in that case. EDDM is a great option to to. It's, I mean, it's it's an expense. I mean, it's not an expense. Marketing is an investment in your company. That's how you have to look at it. Um, so. It costs some money, but you know that's going in a mailbox somewhere. Somebody's going to get that out of their mailbox and see your name on it. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't know the numbers of the return, what the rate is on that, but I know it's effective. 
because uh, people do it and I hear a lot of testimonials about it. So door hangers are effective, yard signs are effective. Uh, if you're chemical lawn treating, I know a lot of people put out yard signs and just see your name in the neighborhood. That's what Jason does, put them, push them out and everybody driving up and down the road sees his name there. And it's, it's just a branding, 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 senior name in the community. And uh, that's a traditional marketing is just, there's a lot of ins and outs to it, a lot of different ways to go about it. But that's what I would say is, it, it, EDDM is a great, great option. And if you don't have the money for that, go go to Staples and pass out some, print some flyers for 10 or 15 bucks on a sheet of paper, create a design on uh, online somewhere, and then just go go pass them out. Put them on uh, in a flag or put them on somebody's door. And they, they're still going to see that stuff. It just might not be as effective. But if you, it's a good it's a good way to get into it because EDDM, it costs money. Um, so that that's traditional marketing. That's probably what I, that's my advice on it. All right, so if you're going online, we're talking about website, social media, things like that. So what have, what have you done in, in those areas that's been effective? Are you on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube? I, I, you know, I know you're, you're growing a social media audience, but how does yeah. it help you in your own local business? So local business, uh, you have to know your audience. You have to know what platform your audience is going to be on, what your target audience is. My target audience is not going to be on Instagram. My target customer I mean uh, it's not gonna be on Instagram now growing the social media business my target audience is on Instagram and TikTok and all those platforms but if I want people to sign me up for a lawn care service it's gonna be off Facebook that's where we're gonna be marketing so we do a lot of Facebook uh, ads a specific targeted ads if we want to if we want to install landscape jobs in the spring we're gonna post about landscape job installation specifically not just like hey, we're growing green landscapes. We can do lawn maintenance and grass cutting and we can put some plants in the ground and we don't do broad topics. We narrow it down and we say, this is what we want for the spring. And we did that last spring. We did that. We posted, we did, ran some Facebook ads for a few days and said, uh, we want to, we are targeting landscape installs. We put some before and after work of what one we had just done. And within uh, 24, 48 hours, we had two jobs uh, signed up off of that one post. So it's not gonna happen every single time. But Facebook is a great option there because the most of the time your ideal customer is going to be on Facebook looking in the what's happening groups or you, you post an ad, it's going to come up in their news feed. You can uh, geofence on Facebook, I'm pretty sure. You can kind of target your area of where you want it to go. Uh, you can target age ranges and all that. So there's a lot of analytics involved with it. But uh, Facebook is where I go for there. Instagram, I don't really post much business, like actual landscape business stuff on there. We post social media stuff. We post podcast stuff on there. We post uh, pictures of the work. I mean, just like the rig and what's happening during the day, but we don't try to gain new customers on Instagram. Uh, I know you're a big you're a big advocate for websites. Websites just are huge. Uh, you have to be, make sure it's uh, has a good SEO ranking and you have uh, good keywords in there. Excuse me. Have good keywords in there. And um, I think another one is uh, Google My Business. That's definitely a, that's definitely a key key thing you must have is Google My Business needs to be up and running. You need to have reviews on there and it needs to be, you just need to, so when you Google on, when you Google lawn care services near me, what comes up before you even get to the websites, the map pack is what it's called. And it's the three or four services there that shows on Google Maps, that's what comes up. And that's where I want to be. I want to be in that map pack. My, I want to be at the top of that. So when somebody sees it, because I, I don't want to have one, I want to have good reviews. I want to have a bunch of reviews on there. And I want to be in those top three, so nobody even has to scroll down. They can just click on that. My the website tab will be there in that map pack. They'll just click directly on my website, go straight to it, and then they can get all my contact information. So um, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Definitely need a quality website to send somebody to, but you also need to have a good Google My Business listing. All right, and you mentioned earlier about referrals. Do, do you do you encourage that? Do you give incentive to the customer if they give you a referral or? Or does it just kind of happen because they think you're great? No, we do. Um, a, a lot of the times, they've just been, we just do really quality work. And, and people just refer us to their friends because they like the work that we do. But we, we have done incentives in the past. We don't really, like, have one thing that we do all the time. Uh, I know some people, some people have a constant referral program where if you refer a new client and they land the client, then you'll get your next treatment free or your next lawn mowing free, whatever that is. Um, we don't really stick to that. We don't have a set thing that we use. But there has been times where we've really been trying to push some push some new growth, and we'll throw a program in there where twenty five dollars off your next cut, or 
uh, landscape job, we'll give you a discount on that landscape job if you refer us to another landscape job or whatever it may be. It, it's all, it all depends on what scenario you're in, what type of work you're doing, and, and it just you have to implement your own things in your own business. The last one we're going to mention is acquisition. So when you, you started and you acquired somebody else's business, is yep. that um, what thoughts and tips you have? You know, what should somebody consider if they're going to go in and look at, maybe they already have an existing business, but they want to acquire somebody else's business to grow or they're wanting to acquire one just to get started. Uh, what you know? What should they be concerned about, and what, when, when? How do they know if that's a good opportunity or not? Yeah, you definitely need to do your research for sure. Um, you need to have, you need to get referrals from them. You need to talk to their customers and see uh, how the guy did. I think you need to, you need to kind of test his work. Was he a good? If he did good on those yards, and you can probably trust him, like he's probably going to be a good guy. So I would ask for a customer list. You need to see where they are in your area. Um, for, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to scale a company and you want to get in a new area of town and they have an existing route over there, that could be a really good option for you. But like in my case, we're shrinking our service area down every day. I mean, we are staying within the city limits of where we live. I'm not going to buy a new route 25 minutes down the road. That's just not, I'm not going to do that. I just don't want to be that far out of town. So don't, don't go 25 minutes out of your way just to gain new customers. Uh, do your EDDM marketing. Get your Google My Business set up where people in Trustville, where we are, when they search lawn care in Trustville, that's what comes up is my name comes up in Trustville. They don't they don't search in Moody lawn care company companies in Moody. They don't they don't search that and then my name comes up. I don't want that. I want my name to come up in Trustville. So um, that's the option. The option to buy a company it, it's not a bad option. I did it. I did it. But it was a very unique situation. It was my best friend. We worked together through high school, so it wasn't like I was just finding somebody off the street to go buy their company from. I knew, I knew all the customers already. They all knew me, so there was no change in anybody on the property. They, they knew I was still going to be out there, um, and it was just a thing. that It worked flawlessly for us. I've heard good and bad things about buying companies. You just definitely need to, definitely need to come upon a price that is reasonable for y'all. I, I I'm not going to get into numbers on anything about that. Because that's just you have to make your own decisions there and, and feel whatever you're the most comfortable with. But seek advice from mentors in your community. Maybe maybe uh, people that have bought businesses outside of the lawn care industry. They bought other businesses. Because I know it's a big thing is maybe somebody is building a t-shirt company and there's another little mom and pop shop down the road in the building they want. They might buy that company out to be in that building and then to get their customer base. So go research, find mentors, post in your what's happening group, see if there's anybody that can help you in that in that scenario and just Research, 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 self-educate, do as much research as you can because you don't want to make a decision. You don't want to make a rash decision and then come back to bite you in the butt. All right. Appreciate the information. That you're, uh, tell people where they find you on social media, your podcast. Yeah. I, I know I was a star guest on there. But what, what else? Oh, uh, yeah. How do people find you on, on the Internet if they want to follow your journey? So you can find us at Growing Green Landscapes on Instagram and at Growing Green Landscapes, the podcast on all major podcast platforms. Uh, at the podcast, we just do a lot of entrepreneurship talk and really just gaining uh, any knowledge that we can, any knowledge we can give out to young entrepreneurs, people young in business. No matter how old you are, we're targeting young in business. So if you're in the business for one to five years, you're in that range. That's where we're really hitting because we have a lot. Of, we're in that stage right now. So there's a lot of stuff that we're going through that we can give a lot of advice on, a lot of a lot of talks with a lot of good guests that we talk on that about. So Growing Green Landscapes podcast. Growing Green Lines just on Instagram. Simple branding. You can find us there. That's where we are everywhere. I appreciate Jeremiah being with us. Thanks for watching the video. Leave a comment below, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya.